Hi, this is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of April 24th, 2023. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, in a recent op-ed, the Binkley family, the owners of the ADN, make clear that while they support government spending, they want other people to pay for it while they dodge. Second, we explain how the Senate Finance Committee is setting up an Alaska version of the Hunger Games, but with one exception. They are giving one key group a pass and allowing them to sit at home watching while the rest have to fight it out. And third, we explain why sales taxes aren't the right answer, but are far better than doing nothing. And now let's join Michael. Let's dive into the weekly top three, Brad. Your first topic today is, uh, it's a little bit of a jab. It's how the Binkley family, which is a well-known family in the interior, and of course they're the owners now, the ADN and more, how they love the government spending, but they just don't want to pay for it. So uh, give us uh, give us a rundown of number one. Well, Michael, the, the ADN, the Anchorage Daily News editorial board page, uh, has, has really become the Binkley family blog, right? I mean, they, they've got a professional writer writing it, but it's it's Ryan and and the family that's really determining what's going on the page. And, and this weekend's editorial, they've, they've taken to having a major editorial during the weekends. This weekend's editorial just, just, just sent me over the edge. The title of it is Alaska's Latest Innovation, Innovation The Tax and Spend Republican. And what the, what the editorial takes off on is uh, the proposal, the, the rumored proposal, the administration still hasn't come out with it, but the rumored proposal by the administration to uh, put forward a sales tax for consideration by the legislature. And, and the Binkley family blog uh, uh, attacks that as being tax and spend, that, that, the, that the Republicans, the governor now is proposing to tax uh, so he can spend. The, the, the hypocrisy behind this is just amazing, just sort of overwhelming. I mean, this the Binkley family blog has been the ones who have, who have you know endorsed K through 12 spending, endorsed uh, child spending on child care, state funded uh, child care or state subsidized child care. In the past, they've endorsed uh, higher capital budgets and they've endorsed uh, uh, continued spending on the university during the showdown that we had in in the 2019 session and and subsequently, uh, they've pushed spending package after spending package after spending pa- package. But now that it's come time to pay for it, pay for all this spending, cover the deficits, now that we've run out of savings and we've, and we've hit the end of the road or we're hitting the end of the road and it's come time, time to pay for it, they don't want to pay. They're, they're, the entire complaint in this editorial is, well, just use PFD cuts. I mean, what, what you're, what you're, we don't need these sales tax things. we got a, plenty of PFDs that we can continue to cut. Let's just use PFD cuts which as we've said on the show before, time and time and time again, is pushing the cost of middle and lower income Alaska families. It's what Matt Berman called a couple of weeks ago on this very page on the, on the ADN uh, editorial page uh, called the most regressive PFD cuts, the most regressive tax ever. Um, and so the Binkley family isn't against, isn't against paying for it. They're just against them paying for it because what a sales tax would do is take some slight amount, we're going to talk about this in the third segment, but take, but increase 
by some amount, the take from the top 20%. It would bring the top 20% into the game and it would bring businesses uh, into the game. The very thing that Ben Carpenter talked about a few weeks on the show, getting businesses involved in pushing back on spending because they have to pay uh, a portion of it instead of just pushing it all to middle and lower income Alaska families. It's just it's just the height of, a, of, of hypocrisy for the Binkley family blog now to say, oh my God, all this spending? Oh, that's that's just, you know, we, we can't pay for that. We right. ought to just be cutting PFDs uh, to yes. pay for that, pushing the cost of middle and lower income Alaska families. And I and I think that's just, I mean, it is the the the, the hypocrisy that this page is now pushing, that the Bankley family blog is now pushing, uh, is just uh, overwhelming. Spend, it, spend, spend, but don't make us pay for it. Well, and here's, uh, let me give folks just a little bit of a taste of the hypocrisy. I got it. When you sent me this article, I got the, to the third paragraph and I almost just threw my computer out the window because I was looking at this. And in the third paragraph, in three sentences, it's the first says, it's not a very conservative proposal, although tax proponents surely have their talking points in order. Okay. So where was your conservativeness in all these other proposals for spending? Where was your conservativeness in, in holding back and not overspending and not spending out of the CBR and all that? That was sentence one. Sentence two was, they'll have quite a task. Imposing a sales tax would be a drag on the state's economy that's already <laughs> near the bottom. And I'm like, what do you think PFD cuts have been? What do you think? I mean, you think PFD cuts have had no effect on the private economy? You guys are so full of poo. I mean, and then the third sentence, it would raise prices that have already ballooned because of inflation and increased transportation costs, which here's where they care. Here's where they care, which especially in rural communities are already far from affordable. You want to help rural communities? How about giving them their full PFD? I mean, in one paragraph, they literally just jape themselves right there you're right the hypocrisy on this article is so thick you could cut it with a butter knife i mean it is insane you know the the thing that the thing that really troubles me i i would i would i would welcome having a debate about about the pfd uh and and, and its impact on the economy and its impact on alaska families and its impact on middle and lower especially its impact on middle and lower income alaska families and and let's discuss that they never mention it they never mentioned the fact, I mean, to just to pick that paragraph, they never mentioned that the ICER 2016 report says PFD cuts have the largest adverse impact of all of the options, including sales taxes, income taxes, all the others, have the largest adverse impact on the overall Alaska economy of any of the options. They never mentioned in this in the in the article that the 2016 ICER and 2017 ITEP reports in, uh, uh, demonstrate that cutting the PFD has the largest adverse impact on middle and lower income Alaska families. 80% of Alaska families, the only ones that benefit from PFD cuts are the top 20%. They just, they, they never mentioned the Matt Berman editorial on their page two weeks ago that talks about PFD cuts being the most regressive tax ever. And, and it's just, I mean, it, it's like, it's like this stuff, they're in a fact free zone, right? It's, it's, you know, we can, we could be the, the Bakley family blog can make up stuff and just, you know, be fact free and say, oh, it's horrible that, you know, that we're going to impose these taxes on, uh, on, 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 you know, Bush families, or it's horrible that we're going to impose these taxes on business. When in fact, PFD cuts have a larger adverse impact on both of those categories. Um, it, it, the, the lack of acknowledgement of of facts of of reports of studies of of editorials on their own page by by noted economists the the lack of even an acknowledgement of that just um is just sort of sort of mind-blowing i mean it they've turned into a fact-free zone right they just sort of make stuff up and and and, and print it out there as if as if it's fact and it's not it's uh, again the talking out of both sides of their mouths in this article. I mean, you read this whole article, and it's all the whole thing is just out of both sides of their mouths. That these tax uh, tax measures are being shopped to legislators late in the session, after previous declarations that people should vote on any new revenue measures, an irresponsible notion to begin with, because the people they shouldn't have any say in that, shows that their proponents are not serious about the task of balancing Alaska's budget. Where has been the hue and cry to balance Alaska's budget for the last ten years? 
Where is that? I mean, okay, they haven't owned the paper for the last 10 years. Where has it been since you took over the paper, the hue and cry to balance the budget properly? They're not. It's 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 all about it's all about what can we get to spend that we don't have to pay for. It's it's the it's the personification of limousine liberals. I mean, limousine liberals are the ones that say you got to do this or you got to do that or government's got to be involved here. Or government's got to be involved here. But don't make me pay for it. I mean, I don't make the don't make the the wealthy uh, supporters uh, of those causes uh, pay for it. Make somebody else pay for it. Make you know. Sometimes it's oil companies. Sometimes it's middle and lower income Alaska families through PFD cuts. It's anybody but me. Don't make me pay for it. And that's exactly what they've done. I mean, they are they are limousine liberals to the max. It is you know increase K through twelve spending, increase child uh, involve the state in child care by subsidizing uh, having state subsidized child care increase university spending, increase the capital budget, but don't make me pay for it. Make middle and lower income Alaska families pay for it uh, through PFD cuts. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how, how Johnny and Ryan it, it were perceived when, when they were, you know, up in the, up in the, uh, up in the interior. I don't know how Johnny was perceived when he was a state Senator uh, from up in the interior, but, but they've, they've just crossed the line and clearly become limousine liberals. Uh, with the with the line that they're taking here, well, spend it, it, spend it, but just don't yeah. make me pay for it. And it's so blatantly obvious that they have no fundamental understanding of what the PFD actually is, what the permanent fund, and what the dividend itself actually is. That it is, they keep treating it like it's government. I mean, their whole premise they start from a flawed premise to begin with, that the whole thing is just government welfare, that it is not the people's share, and that's that's where the disconnect is. I can guarantee you. Just read this whole thing; you'll see it. That's what the disconnect is. Uh, on this whole thing. By the way, I'll link the article in the chat room so folks can, if you want to go out and look at it, you can jump over to Facebook and take a peek at it. Go ahead, Brad. Well, it's just, I mean, it's, uh, Michael, it's just, we've got a fact-free, a fact-free editorial board just sort of making stuff up now. Even uh, sort of set aside whether it's the government, whether it's the citizen's share or not. It is, but set that aside. What ICER has told us, what ITEP has told us, is using PFD cuts, funding less than the statutory level of the PFD, if you want to come at it the, the bottom up, using PFD cuts uh, has the largest adverse impact on the overall Alaska economy, has the largest adverse impact on 80% of Alaska families. Any other method is fairer, better for a lot, any other revenue measure is, is, is better for 80% of Alaska families. The only one the only ones it's not better for is the top 20% because they'd have to pay more than they do under PFD cuts, but they don't pay more than anybody else. I mean, if we use a flat tax, uh, they'd pay the same as everybody else. A sales tax, heck, they they still pay less than everybody else. Right. Uh, uh, and 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 yet and yet they complain about that. They just don't want to pay. They just don't want to pay their. They don't want to pay anything toward the cost of government. They want they want to push cost of government up. They want to push, you know, an increased spending because it's good for Alaska. But when it comes time to pay for it, Johnny and family does just doesn't want to be involved. And that's, you know, I don't know why the hell, I, why the heck I ought to be listening to them anymore. I don't know why yeah. this editorial page, uh, the Binkley family blog ought to, ought to get any sort of credence anymore. You read this article, like I said, I wanted to throw my computer out the window after the second or third paragraph. And I just read through this thing and I am like, these guys. These guys are such hypocrites, criticizing people who are trying to come up with solutions for a full fiscal plan one way or the other and going on about how they're not conservative enough and how they're not this and how they're not that. But you are the same guys that have been advocating for taking the PFD and not pulling back on government. I mean, that whole comment about, oh, well, you should you're not balancing the budget. Where have you been? Where have you been? Where were you when we spent $14 billion out of the CBR to begin with? Where were any of you on any of this? It's, it, it, it really is the height of hypocrisy. Well, for them, to, for them to claim to be concerned about the Alaska economy now, for them to, be, to, to claim to be concerned about the Bush and about how the, how the, the impact of, uh, of taxes would, would affect the Bush uh, now, and 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 on top of that, then to say, well, the PFD cuts the right way to do it. That you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have these taxes. You ought to continue with the most regressive tax ever. 
uh, that, that you ought to continue with uh, with that approach because that's better. The only per- the only people it's better for. Come on, Johnny. At least be you know Johnny and Ryan and Kai. At least be honest. The only people it's better for is you. The only people it's better for is you and the top twenty percent. You and your friends at the Chamber of Commerce. You and your friends at the at the Petroleum Club. The, that's the only people it's better for. The other eighty percent of Alaska families, it's worse. The overall Alaska economy, it's worse. You want to make your lives better? I, I get it. But right. Don't don't try to sell it as oh we're we're concerned about the Alaska economy and we're concerned about about the bush. You're just concerned about yourselves. Yeah. No. It 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 really is astonishing. Uh, John Reeves just sent me a text message and he said, the Binkley's never ran a story in the ADN about me kicking their ass in our right-of-way lawsuit. You know, of course they didn't. Of course they, they didn't do that. Uh, you know, anything that looks bad for them, not going to print that stuff, right? Uh, don't worry. We have no, we're separate from the newsroom with this editorial board, totally separate from the newsroom. We have no say in any of that. Um, you know, this is a perfect example again of Republicans who, fully believe that, uh, that, uh, you know, that all that PFD money is just government money and it's okay. Which again, even as a conservative, if you were a conservative Republican, you'd find a way to pass that money back to the people. That's what you'd do. You wouldn't use it to grow the size and scope of government. If you were a true conservative. Now, I mean, that's, they're not conservatives. I mean, they're, they're, they're truly limousine liberals. I mean, whatever, whatever line there was out there, they crossed. Uh, on 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 this editorial. I mean, maybe they crossed a long time ago, but they've crossed it on this editorial. Spend, 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 spend on K through twelve. Spend on uh, uh, state subsidized child care. Spend on the university. Spend on the capital budget. But don't make us pay for it. That is that is liberal. That is that is a limousine liberal to the T. And and you know, I'm I'm sorry, Johnny. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry, Kai. But but that's exactly where you are. Yeah, you ha- you you are not looking out for Alaska families anymore. You're just looking out for yourself, Brad. Uh, you know, as 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 just average mom and pop Alaskans out here watching this stuff, I I I mean, I feel the level of frustration, and I'm trying to do something about it. I have a pulpit to do something like that, but for people who don't have a bully pulpit or anything else, I mean, the frustration level has got to be like at eleven at this point. Like I, I can see why people, some people are just throwing their hands up and going, why bother? Because it doesn't matter. They're going to get what they want anyway. And, and the fix, you know, kind of the fix is in institutionally. This just proves it that in a lot of ways, institutionally, the fix is in. I don't know how to, I don't know how to, to slow the roll of this whole crowd at this point. Yeah. What they're, what they're after, Michael, is to make Alaska uh, 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 a tax-free haven for the top 20%. And, and what they're doing to, in order to do that, in order to keep taxes off the top 20%, they're just pushing more and more and more of the cost down to middle and north uh, Alaska families through through PFD cuts. And and it's it's really, I mean, when I hear people anymore say no taxes, that translates into my mind, no taxes on the top 20%, because we've long since passed right. the point where, where we're, we have taxes, as, as Matt Berman put it, most regressive tax ever. We've long since past that point. It's just no taxes on the top 20%. And what they're arguing for is continue spending, create create this nirvana that we want, create all these programs we want, create these additional things that we that we want that help us as business owners or that or that make us feel better because you know because we're doing something, but just don't make us pay for it. <laughs> yeah. I think Chris says it right there. It's almost like the top 20% has more influence than everyone else. Yeah, it's almost like that, isn't it, Chris? All right, from the hypocrisies of the Binkleys, we're on to number two. Give me a quick tease here, Brad. All right, so the Senate said, Senate finance is setting up for the Hunger Games, the Alaska version of the Hunger Games. And we saw what it's going to look like yesterday in House Finance when House Finance took up Dan Ortiz's bill to increase the BSA permanently. They had Ledge Finance come on and make a presentation uh, about, about what the various options are and, and what they're doing. And we'll see that again in Senate finance this week. What, what they're doing is setting up the Alaska version of the Hunger Games. And I'll explain what I mean by that when we come back. We're on to two of the top three. Hunger Games, Alaskan style. Brad, you said the uh, legislature is setting us up to be District 12, apparently. What, <laughs> uh, what's happening here? 
All right. So we all remember the storyline of the Hunger Games. The Hunger Games was, you know, everybody, every district sent sent uh, uh, players to the to the Hunger Games. Only one could survive. Uh, you, you you killed off the others on your way to being uh, being the survivor. That was the theory behind the, behind the Hunger Games. In any event, what what the what the Senate Finance has done, th- their proposed budget that they're going to consider this coming week, emptied out, took out the PFD, took out uh, BSA increases, um, and 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 hasn't put in any uh, revenue uh, measures. And so you've got a a, a base budget. That has has no no BSA increase, has no uh, 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 increased revenue measures, and has no PFD. And they're setting up they're setting up this Hunger Games of who survives uh, the PFD, the BSA, BSA increase. Uh, is there any increased revenue that that comes out of this? They're setting up this Hunger Games um, in competition between those three, and it became apparent yesterday. Um, in House Finance, when House Finance was considering uh, Representative Ortiz's proposed permanent BSA increase, um, they had Ledge, fi- uh, Ledge Finance lead off with a presentation, and Ledge Finance had had some charts that they did that 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 had three components in it. They had the capital budget, the PFD, and the BSA, and then they had the Hillcorp glitch fix uh, as the only revenue option. And, and the point of their presentation was you can't have all three. You can't have, or you can't have all three, even if you add in uh, the, the Hillcorp glitch fix, uh, that you can't have a, a healthy capital budget and a PFD and the BSA, even if you add in Hillcorp, you can't have those three and still have a balanced budget. And, and those slides, I'm pretty sure, are the slides that we're going to see Ledge Finance present uh, to Senate finance when Senate finance takes up the operating budget, this emptied out operating budget uh, uh, during the during the course of this week. And, and I'm sure we're going to hear Senator Stedman say, you can't have all three. So the question is, which one do you want? Uh, uh, and, and, and do you want the, the BSA increase or do you want a PFD or do you want a healthy capital budget? Or which maybe maybe he'll say, if we do the Hillcourt glitch fix, maybe you can have two. Which two do you want? Capital budget uh, or the B, uh, BSA or PFD? Let me tell you who's down in Juno lobbying right now, and that'll tell you the answer. Who's got lobbyists down there pushing right now? And that'll tell you the answer that, that Stedman's trying to set up, which is, oh, we need a healthy capital budget, and we need, we need a, a BSA increase. So, you know, PFD, you're the ones that, ones that need to take it. Uh, take it in the shorts. What what is not on this chart is is revenue measure is additional revenue measures. He's got the only the only revenue they've got on there is is the Hillcorp glitch fix the S corp uh, fix uh, that adds they've projected about two hundred million dollars in revenue annual revenue. The uh, Dunleavy administration previously projected hundred million, but let's say it's two hundred million. That's the only revenue they've got on there. They've not got a sales tax on there. They've not got a, a, a flat tax on there. They've not got additional oil taxes on top of the Hillcorp glitch, the, the adjustments to the uh, to the credits that uh, that is in the Wilikowski bill. They've not got any of that on there. Uh, they've only got the Hillcorp glitch fix. So they're setting up they're setting up a false hunger games, right? It's it's a false hunger games that that pits the capital budget against the PFD, against the BSA against a little bit um, of, uh, of the oil companies. Who's not, who's not in that game? Who, what district didn't have to send any representatives to that game? Ah, the top 20%. Right. They don't, they, don't get, they don't get impacted by any of these. Yeah, they've already, got, they've already got all their advocates there behind the scenes. They don't need to show up, right? So they've, got their, it, they've already got their own paid advocates. So it's it's a well if they got their pay ad, paid advocates in the sense of you know the Senate they're all nineteen out of twenty are top twenty percenters I mean they've got they got their own advocates in the Senate they don't need they don't need lobbyists for it but it's just I mean we, we've got we've got a Hunger Games that it pits the Alaska economy eighty percent of Alaska families K through twelve all against each other and the top twenty percent are just sitting on the hill 
excused from participating in the games. Their district didn't have to send any anybody just sitting on the hill, you know, counting their money and laughing all the way to the bank while, you know, the minions fight it out down, down below them. And I just, um, but that's exactly what Stedman's trying to do. And all this week, he's going to keep saying, we can't have all three. We can't have all three. It's got to be, it's got to be, we'll go after the Hill, we'll go after the Hill Court glitch, which we should have done five years ago, by the way. But we, we'll go after the Hill Court glitch and that'll add a little bit of revenue, but we can't have all three. So somebody's got to lose and, and who's going to lose. And, and they're going to play this game all week long about who's got to lose. Right. While the top, while the top 20% sit on the Hill, excluded from, excluded from any risk in all this and just, you know, laugh all the way to the bank. Well, and of course, <clears throat> that n- nowhere in this discussion is any kind of other cuts or efficiencies or anything else. We've got to leave government at exactly the exactly the size that it is. It's right sized. We couldn't possibly cut any more. We've heard Stedman say that in the past. So that doesn't even factor into the equation. That's that's not even a side thought. You know, part part of what's going on is is Stedman walked us into this trap, right? Stedman and Senate Finance over the past several years. Instead of cutting the budget, even though they said every year, oh, we'll get after that next year. Instead of cutting the budget, instead of trying to get Alaska government down in to fit the box of revenues that we have, he's just let it go and just let, you know, it, as, as revenues died, he kept spending level, didn't bring spending down to match revenue. And now that we're, and now that we're, we've got, you know, some revenue back up, he just increased spending as opposed to keeping revenue or keeping spending down and maybe let revenue catch up a little bit. And if you look forward, it's just a continuation of spending going up while revenue levels uh, as uh, as PFD cuts go down and offset a little bit by uh, by the POMB draw. Um, he, he's walked us into this box. The committee has walked us into this box. And Stedman just doesn't want to admit, he, he doesn't want taxes on his watch. So it's got to be somebody else's fault, right? Can't be my fault. I can't be the one who, who caused this problem. So it must be the PFD. It must be, you know, having to pay the PFD or it must be, uh, uh, you know, K through 12 or it must be the capital budget. It's their fault. And we got to cut one of those as opposed to, hey, top 20 percent, you're the ones who walked us into this box. You need to you need to contribute. You need to be part of the solution. You need to, to step up and pay your pay your share, just like you're forcing middle and lower income Alaska families to pay. He just doesn't want to do that. He doesn't it, he doesn't want to be the Senate finance chair. That that approved tax. So you know, Hunger Games, Hunger Games with the top twenty percent excluded. Hunger Games begin. Yeah. Number three is sales taxes are not great, but they're better than anything else that's that's available out there right now or being discussed out there. Give us your thoughts on this. Well, Governor Dunleavy last week uh, was rumored to uh, be be on the verge preparing to submit a sales tax. He hasn't. Uh, and we're running out of time this session. So that may be maybe sort of like his proposal for gambling a few years ago, or maybe like his proposal for increased oil taxes uh, a couple of years ago. Just, you know, something that gets rumored and then, and then, then never happened. Sales taxes are, are problematic to me because they're still regressive. They still, don't, they still don't get the top 20% in the game paying a proportionate share of the cost so that they have an incentive to push back on spending. It still lets them off light, uh, and it still lets them off uh, uh, paying a, a, a fairly small amount and leaves them with the incentive to increase spending because they don't have to pay much of it. Most of it is pushed off to middle and lower income Alaska families. But it's better. I mean, sales taxes are better than, than continued PFD cuts. Their sales taxes are less regressive uh, than, than PFD cuts. Uh, they do engage the top 20% to some degree. There is some increased responsibility in the top 20% and may move them closer to actually engaging on spending, pushing back on spending like the Binkley's, like the Binkley family op-ed page, uh, pushing back on spending instead of instead of continuing to try to shove it to middle and lower income Alaska families. It may engage them some. So it's better, it's better than where we are. And for that reason, we ought to be, if that's, if that's where the consensus is, if that's where they can get the votes, then fine, let's go forward with that. But but it's it's better. It's not perfect because it's not pushing the top 20% fully into the game 
but it's better than where we are and we ought to be pushing forward to that. I, I've looked, I, I have, I think it's fine that the governor proposed it. If in fact he did during this, during this meeting that didn't have press, uh, but let's get on with the show. I mean, let's get it yeah. out there. Let's make it part of the hunger games of Bert Stedman's hunger games. Um, uh, and talk about that as a revenue measure to offset uh, additional PFD cuts. Well, interestingly enough, this is one of the reasons, although you've taken a lot of heat over the last, I guess, four years, you've been talking a lot more about the income tax, a flat tax, and you've taken a lot of heat for it. But the whole point was, was to get out ahead of this revenue train when they did finally bring up a taxation scheme that it would be the most equitable, the less, the least regressive. And that's why you've talked about it and taken a lot of flack for it. Uh, but again, still, here we are. The first thing brought up is a sales tax. Again, the most regressive, doesn't hit the top 20%, disproportionately affects those of the lowest incomes the highest. And 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 that's why you talked about it. Yep, exactly right, Michael. I mean, I, I, I'm still... I'm still an advocate of a flat tax. I'm still going to be an advocate of a flat tax even after we pass a sales tax. Let's improve on where we started. But let's at least get off using PFD cuts. Let's at least get the top 20% having some skin in the game. I mean, the one thing that the Binkley family op-ed did tell me is they're concerned that they might have to pay a portion of it. Uh, concerned enough that they wrote an op-ed uh, attacking it. Um, and so, yeah, so maybe... That gets them off the dime, gets them involved, gets them and other top 20% involved in pushing back on spending. What Right now, what's going on is the top 20% doesn't care about spending because they're focusing their entire efforts on pushing the costs down to middle and lower income Alaska right. families through PFD cuts. Right. They're not pushing back on spending. In fact, they're some of the ad big advocates of increasing spending. Right. So, as long as somebody else pays for it. Exactly long, right. As long as somebody else pays for it. That's the bottom line. I'm going to be that guy that said, we, I, you know, I told you so. I'm not a fan of taxes. I don't want taxes. But I agreed with Brad's approach to say, if we're going to have taxes, we should at least be able to choose or at least talk about the most palatable of the taxes. And that's why Brad has been on this program for the last four or five years talking specifically about a flat tax. When Brad and I started, we didn't talk about taxes at all. We were only talking about right-sizing government. Brad's been on this program for eight years, and and for the first three or four years, we didn't talk about that at all. And when we did start talking about it, it was only because we were trying to get ahead of the power curve of, you know, eventually there's going to have to be revenue. And here we are having revenue, but it's the sales tax, which is just, it's astonishing. Go ahead, Brad. It's tax structure. What, what, what? Tax structure matters. It's not just the revenue. It's not just getting additional revenue through some through some through some means. It's tax structure that matters. Tax structure creates incentives, and 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 the incentive that we desperately need to create in this state is an incentive where the top twenty percent, those who hire the lobbyists, those who have the most influence, those who are elected to the Senate, push back on spending. That we need to we need to have we need to have a, a program and a, 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 an approach that that incentivizes that sort of behavior. And the problem with sales taxes, in addition to the fact that they're they're just another means of pushing costs off on middle and lower income Alaska families, is they don't create that incentive. Now maybe they create it to a small extent, and and the Binkleys are you know are telling us that it does create it to a small extent because they're they're concerned about it. But it doesn't create it to the same extent, to the same extent that 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 the top 20 percent are trying to push costs off on middle and lower income Alaska families. They're still going to focus more with the sales tax, focus more on keeping that in place, pushing costs of middle and lower income Alaska families than than they than they will be about pushing back on spending, getting them. I'm not I'm not advocating for a progressive income tax. I never have advocated for a progressive income tax. To, to tilt the incent to tilt the structure the other way to take more from the top 20 percent than right. we take from everybody right. else I everybody just needs to have the same skin in the game everybody needs to have the same incentive the problem with the progressive income tax is is you've got the reverse now you've got the bottom 20 percent or the lower 40 percent that don't care that right. they don't have to pay for it Free ride, and so they right. push for increased spending yeah exactly have, having a flat tax across the board, so that everybody has the same incentive, the same skin in the game to push back. That tax structure is critical, I think, 
to getting people to push back on 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 the spending levels that we've got going on. I mean, if you if you held a gun to my head and said, here are all the tax structures, which one would you want? A flat tax would be the one that I would choose if that's if you're forcing me to do it. That's why the talk about it has come about. Chris over on Twitch asked a question and he said, is Brad coming to a political realization that there's less political will for spending cuts than new revenues? Or does he still see new revenues as the most plausible solution to Alaska budget shortfalls? Oh, it's I, one, I, yeah, it, Go ahead. It's, it's one gets the other. There is not the, there is not the, the political will now for spending cuts. The reason there isn't the political will for spending cuts is the top 20 percent gets away with not having to pay for it. So they spend all their time trying to make sure the cost keeps getting pushed to middle and lower income Alaska families through PFD cuts. If you if we had a revenue structure that flattens the revenue take from all Alaska families, makes gives everybody the skin in the game, then we're going to have a switch to we're going to find a switch in the top 20 percent to pushing back on spending instead of the, the Binkley family blog saying, keep it down on the top on the on the lower 80 percent. Gosh, don't make us pay for any of it. Then we'd have a Binkley family blog that would say push back on spending because my gosh, we got to pay for it. Right. And 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 that's so one triggers the other. Having having a structure that incentivizes the top 20 push top 20 percent to push back on spending then results in the pushback, then changes the dynamic, changes the discussion to push back uh, to a pushback on spending. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, I mean, this is very frustrating. Again, we've been talking about this for years, the same thing, the same problem, the same solution. Uh, I mean, before Brad was ever on the show, I was talking about this whole, you know, this, this spending problem in the state of Alaska. It's not, it's not anything new. And yet over 20 years, we have done little or nothing to try and fix it. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's astonishing to me, just absolutely astonishing. Um, Brad, I'll give you the, the, I'll give you final thoughts here. You're, 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 you're shot at final thoughts for this week. And where do we go? Well, this, this coming week, I think we're going to see the hunger games play out in Senate finance. My, my opinion on that, my push on that is going to be that you're leaving the top 20%. You're leaving them out of the game. Their district doesn't have to send a representative. They get to send up on the Hill and just sit up on the Hill. It's like the, it's like the Roman gladiators, right? They get to send in the stand. They get to be Nero, sit, sit in the stands and watch everybody else fight it out and go thumbs up or thumbs down uh, as, it, as it goes on. We need to have them in the game. We need to have them writing op-eds. We need the Binkley family blog writing op-eds uh, again to push back on spending as opposed to just saying, oh, we need spending, but let's push it to middle and lower income Alaska families. They need to be part of the Hunger Games. And, and, I, and, I, and I doubt we achieve that this week. But, but that's the direction we need to go. We can't have somebody sitting up on a hill, either either, either the, the top 20% or the bottom 40% or any percent. We can't have them sitting up on the hill saying, ah, oh, we, don't, we don't care. You know, spend away because we're not right. the ones having to pay for it. We right. need to get everybody in the game. The Hunger Games need to have every district. The Alaska fiscal Hunger Games need to have every district represented. Nobody gets, should have a free pass. Brad Keithley, Alaska's for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. It's good to, good to have you on board. Thanks for uh, coming out. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the weekly top three.